Luxor, Egypt. Here lies the tomb of the world's most famous pharaoh, King Tutankhamun. When it was discovered in 1922, completely intact and preserved after more than 3,000 years, it was considered one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of all time. But as spectacular a find as it was, almost a century later, new evidence has come to light that there may be much more to King Tut's final resting place than meets the eye. While examining high-resolution scans of the tomb, on September 28, 2015, British Egyptologist Nicholas Reeves found something remarkable. The possibility of two hidden passages connected directly to King Tut's burial chamber. There was a Spanish company who was recruited to scan the tomb of Tutankhamun in order to replicate it. It is through this high-definition photography scanning that Reeves noticed that on the north wall of the burial chamber, there are some cracks indicating the possibility of a door. And also on the eastern wall. So there's two possible chambers. Reeves took his laser images to Dr. Mamdouh Damati, who is the Minister of Antiquities in Egypt. And they both decided to dig further. The use thermal scanning, which tells you the exact density of the wall at every part. And they have confirmed that they might have discovered another pathway or a chamber behind King Tut's burial chamber. Whether there are more buried treasures beyond the painted walls remains to be seen. But if so, Reeves has a theory. He believes the passageway may lead to the tomb of Queen Nefertiti the wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten, who ruled during the 14th century BC. Reeves speculates that, in fact, Tutankhamun inherited the tomb of Nefertiti. The reason is this. The tomb of Tutankhamun is very unusual. It's rather small compared to the other pharaohs. All great kings of the Athen dynasty have amazingly large tombs with storerooms and chambers and so forth. Tutankhamun's tomb, if it is his tomb, is very modest. But why would Nefertiti's tomb be hidden beyond King Tut's? Ancient astronaut theorists believe there may be a profound reason that Queen Nefertiti was not of this world. Nefertiti's parents are unknown. On pictures, she's shown with one of these elongated heads. Now we know the gods, the old Egyptian gods, they had longer heads than we have. And according to the pyramid texts, sometimes they left the earth and then they returned again. So Nefertiti's parents were maybe extraterrestrials. King Akhenaten and his wife looked completely different than all the other ancient Egyptian kings. King Akhenaten always was depicted with it elongated skull, a bigger size hip, a belly that drools over his belt. He believed that he wasn't a man, and he wasn't a woman, and he wasn't a king, he was just something else. The most unusual feature is elongated skulls. There's been a lot of discussions about what these skulls meant, whether they were literally elongated skulls or whether they were just decoration features. It's certainly very intriguing. It doesn't appear before or afterwards. So there's something rather odd about this, I have to admit. The reign of Akhenaten and Nefertiti introduced a new and controversial monotheistic faith to Egypt, worshiping the disc-shaped sun god, Aten. The Aten was described as this flying sun disc. Egyptologists are merely saying that this was nothing else but the sun. But the question is, can the sun instruct you in different disciplines? And the answer is no. So we have to see whether or not our ancestors encountered technology and misinterpreted it as something in nature. 